Hello students. Um, today I'm going to be teaching about uh, the moving crust. This is uh, unit five, topic four. All right, this uh, in the curriculum, this uh, uh, aligns with EK3 and this involves investigating and interpreting evidence of major changes in landforms and the rock layers that underlie them. And then, of course, you'd be able to describe evidence for crustal movement and identify and interpret patterns in these movements. Um, and we'll be talking about that in, around the world, actually. Again, uh, I will not be showing the videos in this class session. Um, I will be sharing my PowerPoints with you, and uh, it is an expectation that you will go into that PowerPoint and watch these videos. So the Earth's interior, essentially, the crust is, is the top layer of the Earth, uh, home to planets, animals, and soil. Its depths can be anywhere from five to 60 kilometers. Uh, below it is the mantle, which is the second layer, which is made of rock material. And the upper part is solid, whereas the lower part is partly melted. And this can be anywhere from 1,000 to 4,000 degrees Celsius. And the interesting thing about the crust is if, if the, Earth was a basketball, uh, the crust of the Earth would be about the thickness of a, of a piece of paper. Uh, so in actuality, the, the stuff that we stand on every day on Earth is relatively thin compared to, uh, compared to the liquid part of the center of the Earth, uh, which is very, very hot. Okay, the upper mantle, which is the third layer, um, and crust together are called the lithosphere. Um, so the mantle and the crust together are called the lithosphere. And then below the mantle is the core, and this is the third layer. Uh, the outer core is made of mainly liquid iron and nickel, while the inner core is solid um, at somewhere between 5,500 to 6,000 degrees Celsius. This is our textbook picture showing um, the different layers here. The crust is this top layer, and then the mantle is this section over here, the second layer. And then you have the outer core, which is liquid, and then you have the inner core, which is solid. Then here's another graphic showing the same thing. So you have the, the crust being this uh, outer layer, and then you have the upper and lower mantle, uh, the second layer, and then the inner core, the third, sorry, the outer core, the third, and the inner core, the final layer. Okay, notice, uh, well, there's evidence for continental drift, and so this is evidence A. Notice how the continents look like a puzzle that fit together. Um, Ralph uh, Wagner um, actually noticed how these pieces fit together and uh, came up with this theory for Pangaea and, and uh, the movement of the crust. So evidence B here for, for this theory Wagner had for continental drift is uh, in this map where they're finding the fossil record and they noticed that uh, different animals or the same animals can be found in different parts of the earth. For example, the labyrinthodont is on South Africa and Australia and how could they get there? They're only in these two places that they find the fossils and this organism can't swim that far. So, so how in the world would they get to these two locations unless those landforms were together? And notice a few other ones there as well, um, like uh, the, the, the plant, the Glossopteris, and it's in Antarctica and in South America. And first off, this, I'm not aware of there being any plants that grow in Antarctica, uh, not plants like this. Um, so clearly at some point, uh, these, this land mass would have needed to be further uh, towards the equator and possibly connected to South America where it's quite warm and uh, another evidence for land masses moving. And so then you have a few more examples of, of different dinosaurs that you find in different continents. And how did they get there? For example, the, the Mesosaurus, it's in South America and it's also in Africa. Uh, it makes sense that these two landforms would be close together. And so, you know, when you actually do put them together in a puzzle here, like a puzzle pieces, it does seem that, uh, you know, if they were to connect it, that uh, these, uh, 
fossil records actually do line up as well. As you can see, India, Antarctica, uh, Africa, Australia, and South America all connected, and it follows this uh, um, fossil record. And so Wagner was a scientist who noticed that several fossils and similar plants and animals had been found on different continents. Along with the fossil, he also noticed that continents could fit together in interlocking shapes. So Wagner concluded that the continents were joined together as one supercontinent called Pangaea. His explanation is called the theory of continental drift. So evidence C, um, the mountain ranges were also compared. And notice how uh, the mountain ranges of uh, North America uh, match the mountain ranges in Norway and uh, the northern part of Africa and Europe. And so they realize, and the, the ages of these mountains are the same age. So essentially they concluded that, uh, you know, the, they must have been at some point together. Also, trilobites in the Himalayan suggest that uh, India was once part of Antarctica, which broke off and collided with Eurasia. Um, notice my map on the bottom here, the Himalayas are actually kind of landlocked here, and, and, and trilobites are organisms that live in the ocean. And so how would they get on top of mountains unless, uh, you know, there was a colliding of, of cotton plates that caused it to grow there? Uh, or cause the, the fossils to be pushed up into the mountains out of the water. And then here's some more evidence. Um, coal provided more evidence because in, in order for it to form, a rich tropical plant environment must have been pre pre present, but the coal is found in moderate to cold climates. You'd need far more, more plants and animals uh, available to be able to create that much coal where we find coal deposits. So. Glaciers once covered the southern hemisphere, or sorry, so another, uh, so coal, the land masses must have moved from there uh, closer to the equator out towards the northern and southern hemisphere to explain why so much coal would be available there. And then another one uh, is glaciers. Glaciers once covered the southern hemisphere. These places are now far too warm to support the presence of glaciers. So this suggests that the continents may have once been part of the South Pole. So these were the responses to Wagner. After his findings were published in a book called The Origins of the Continents and Oceans, uh, remember Pangaea was a supercontinent that broke apart 200 million years ago uh, to today's continental places where they exist now. And that's a picture of Pangaea in the bottom right there. Wagner's idea, unfortunately, were rejected because the scientific community did not agree with his assumptions and explanations that the moon might be responsible for the moon of the continents. And of course, we know now that it's not the moon. Um, and I'll get into the reason for it a little bit later. The moon is responsible for the tides moving, uh, creating oceanic tides, uh, but not the reason for the continents to move. After his deaths, advances in technology and the work of Canadian scientists led to the new theory that explained Wagner's observations. So fortunately, while he was alive, they did, uh, they did not appreciate all that he brought, um, but his ideas certainly were uh, supported after, after his death. Um, there's a, some interesting ideas here around biblical evidence. Um, so is there biblical evidence to support Pangaea? Um, there is one verse that talks about uh, in Genesis 1, 1 to 13, that talks about um, in, the, in that time, the land separated, uh, which is kind of interesting and fascinating. So perhaps that might have been a global event, or perhaps that could have been, um, you know, some other local event, um, but definitely speaks to the land separating. And is there evidence to support the movement of tectonic plates? Well, in Genesis 10, 25, um, it talks all about the flood. And, uh, and if there was an oceanic flood and the massive amounts of upheaval that the Bible talks about uh, that happened to the ground and water gushing forth, there could have been whole continents moving underneath the ocean of water they were floating under, and they would not have felt anything. Uh, just like today, a tsunami happens under underwater and people in boats above don't even know that that tsunami uh, was generated right where they are. 
but the wave that it creates ends up destroying massive amounts of land um, when it reaches the shoreline. So, so potentially a lot of movement could have happened during uh, Noah's flood. Um, and then, is there biblical evidence for dinosaurs? Job fourteen talks, or sorry, Job forty talks about uh, this animal that had the thick, uh, you know, a tail like a, like this massive tree. And uh, we certainly know of some dinosaurs that had massive tails. So, um, you know, they didn't talk in the Bible directly about dinosaurs uh, outside of this verse, as far as I know, and I'm not an expert, um, but this could have been speaking to a dinosaur that existed in the time. And then I've just provided some more information around, uh, you know, what is the canopy theory and is there a reason why the earth could have been so warm? Uh, then some creation evolution ideas, intelligent design theory, and progressive creationism. The idea that uh, perhaps there is a, somehow a link where God could have possibly uh, created uh, the world in progressively, not all at once. And so here's a few videos again that you can watch in your own time. So there's been advances in technology, sonar, for example, and this has helped uh, to support uh, Wagner's theory as well. Um, they identified a mid-Atlantic ridge and mountains on the sea floor. So whatever is underneath the ocean actually matched what we saw above the ground as well. And so uh, if there's mountain formation happening underground or underwater as well, then what's making those? Is the sea floor moving, right, is the question. Uh, then there's also something called magnetometers. They are electronic instruments that detect the direction and strength of the magnetic field. Uh, and essentially the magnetic fields in the Atlantic sometimes pointed south instead of north. These were called reversal strips found, and these are found at the mid-Atlantic ridge. So, so when these boats would map at the bottom of the ocean, uh, they would find that they're pointed in different directions, uh, which means that when, uh, you know, uh, volcanics, created more ground and spread the the plates apart new earth new lava new magma is filling that gap and uh, the, the magnetometers for the magnetic field would be pointing in different directions and they would match on either side of this mid-atlantic ridge they'd be pointing in either direction there you see that how the the pattern there matches uh, as they're pointing in different direction, they move apart that way. So it's the evidence for the sea floor spreading as the magma pushes up there. So igneous rocks can, can they, contain magnetites, and which have iron, and that's magnetic, which lines itself with the Earth's magnetic field. As the rock hardened on the surface, the mineral particles maintain their alignment with the magnetic field, indicating that the reversal strips must have formed at a different time. The pattern of magnetic reversal strips along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge meant the seafloor was spreading, leading to the theory of seafloor spreading. As new rocks form, it takes on the magnetic polarity of the Earth at the time of formation. So here, here's some more pictures regarding the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and, uh, and how those uh, magnetites are pointed in different directions. And you can see this, this world map, how you can see that mid-Atlantic ridge is very pronounced. And, and this is where they believe um, the, you know, the seafloor is spreading. So this is North America, we live in Canada here. And this would be you know, like a profile picture where you see the magma coming up to the center, uh, causing it to spread and, and create these layers. Another thing they found in deep sea drilling, okay, to help prove this theory, confirmation of the theory of C4 spreading was provided by the ship Glomar, the Glomar Challenger, which brought drilling samples up from the ocean floor. Younger rock was closer to the ridge and older rock was closer to the continents. Uh, lava that cools very quickly, and essentially, so because of that, um, one side you know, comes up and moves apart and they noticed uh, the older stuff is closer to the continents on each side, and the newer stuff is in the center. And so that made sense uh, for sea floor spreading. And interestingly enough, lava that cools very quickly on the ocean floor is called pillow lava. Uh, because it's so cold and the pressure is so high down there, it, lava it cools very quickly, and it looks like pillows, which is kind of interesting. 
And here is an example of uh, the Alvin. Um, my brother-in-law is an uh, uh, oceanic uh, scientist, and that's him waving there on the left-hand side. And he's actually going into Alvin uh, to go take pictures of the bottom of the ocean and we collected some of these samples here, uh, which is really kind of interesting. So the theory of plate tectonics. Um, all the evidence collected indicates the Earth's crust is broken up into plates, which are moving on the Earth's mantle, which is the top layer. The new theory is called the theory of plate tectonics. Uh, plates pushing together are called converging plates, whereas plates pulling apart are called diverging plates. It was Tuzo J. Wilson, a Canadian scientist, helped form this new theory by suggesting the plates slid past each other also. So this transform fault here on the right was the one he contributed. And so interestingly enough, it led to this plate tectonics theory because once people realized that there is um, uh, currents uh, that occur underneath the ocean or underneath uh, the mantle um, that would actually cause this movement of uh, continents, they began to appreciate Wagner's theories. This here is a picture of, you know, two plates converging towards each other, okay? And so this, this one on the left is being pushed down into the mantle, melting, uh, melting the, the rock. And this is where this dead material in the mantle here, like plants and animals that die are organic. When they get pushed into hotter areas, that turns that causes it to react and create um, you know oxygen to want to get trapped underground and then rise and this is what they believe that causes uh, volcanoes to form in these kind of uh, subduction zones and so here's two diverging plates that are moving apart okay and essentially this would be the mid-atlantic ridge or because they're moving apart, the magma comes up and starts filling in the gap here and hardening. And that's where you get those uh, uh, layers that form. And so here, here we got a picture of kind of the whole earth where we have a subduction zone over here. We have another subduction zone over here. And this would be the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So this could be Africa or Europe over here. And then on this side, we could have you know, uh, North America, South America, where these two plates are going away from each other. And this is kind of what you see happening underneath the ground or underneath uh, in, in the inner core, in the mantle, where there's, there's liquefied rock. And then you see these convection currents that are happening under, under here. We have this really hot outer core, inner core, it creating so much heat where we learned about convection where the hotter stuff rises and then it comes around and gets cooled and they once they understood that this could be uh, causing these big plates to move um, then this theory of continental drift turned to this theory of plate tectonics and and scientists around the world started to appreciating this this these theories uh, started by Wagner okay so a convection current is a circular flow within a fluid that is caused by the rising of warming particles and sinking of cooler particles scientists believe it is this action within the mantle which is causing the plates to move the plates that collide or converge have one plate above the other and this these places are called subduction zones and subduction zones occur where the convection currents in the mantle cool and sink. So the subduction zone is here and here. Okay. And so this is a big picture of subduction zone where, where this one's being pushed downward. And this is often where volcanoes will form. It's where plates are colliding and converging. All right. So is the Earth's crust getting bigger? Well, no, because while new crust is forming in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, other crust is being pulled or pushed down into the ocean trenches and cycled back into the mantle as molten rock. So this is a whole rock cycle. And the theory, the theory plates is the best explanation of the formation of earthquakes and volcanoes and mountains we have. Um, so uh, there's lots still to be learned and it is still just a theory, but it's the best one we have. All right, so notice uh, all the plate movements around the world. 
Um, so where you have two lines side by side, like, like this one here and this one here, they're, they're coming towards each other, okay? Um, but notice these areas here, they could be going away from each other also, all right? And so, and then these ones here, we have this line like this, these are the slip faults where they're going past each other, kind of like, uh, like tearing or, or sliding sideways from each other like so. Um, and then converging plates, notice the, the legend up here, converging means they're coming towards each other, okay? And then diverging is just a double lines like so. Again, this is a video showing you how uh, Pangea may have formed the world today. It started as Pangea, and they believe there have been a few changes or, or, or supercontinents that were formed along the way. Okay, so in summary, we talked about the layers of the Earth. We talked about the evidence for the movement of the Earth and the ground. And we talked about Wagner's continental drift theory, which led then to the theory of plate tectonics. Well, thank you very much for, for watching my class today. If you have any questions, please, uh, please come to my class and ask them. I'd be happy to help you. And uh, I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much.